Okay, this video is to demonstrate that the uh, luminous fat light SST90 emitter, which is in this torch, has a significantly lower forward voltage, forward voltage after being burned in. Um, these are Sony 26650 VT lithium batteries, similar to the battery space IMR batteries, uh, capable of very high end discharge. These are not by any means fully charged. In fact, on my voltmeter here, you'll see that we have just about 4 volts, 4.01 volts on that one and 4.0 volts on that one. Okay, this is a custom-made two parallel battery carrier. Um, it's basically two loops of sheet metal separated by an insulating layer. Uh, the bottom of that battery is contact to the bottom of that battery. The top of this battery contacts the top of this battery. I'll demonstrate. Okay, one battery in the carrier. Placing leads on the carrier, and there's four volts right there. Okay, we've got the second battery in the top of the carrier. If these are in series or anything similar, they'd be overheating and exploding right now. There's my two parallel battery carrier. Once again, placing the leads on the carrier, four volts. Okay, this is going in the tube of the flashlight. This is a, a true RMS clamp meter, okay, and instead of using one of these DMM leads which has a fair amount of resistance in it, we use this piece of uh, aluminum sheet metal bent into a C or a G shape and slip that right in there like that. And that's going to be our contact point between the edge of the flashlight and the battery negative terminal in the center here. Okay, first thing to do is I'm going to run the flashlight with this uh, recessed gold short spring. Heat that up. Now again, keep in mind this is not 4.2 amps. Okay. This emitter, which formerly would only draw under 9 amps of current after having been burned in, is now pulling more than 9 amps of current off these batteries with less than 4 volts open open pack. As I turn this on, I don't know if I, you can tell by the color of the light coming out of this, but it turns blue pretty quickly. And now we're starting to get a bluish tint. Okay. I'm going to zero the clamp meter. Hope you can see that in the video. Zeros. And I'm going to test the current. Oops. The switch is on. Okay. Now you can see already. We've hit 9 amps, and it's climbing as it heats up. 9.5, 9.6, 9.7. Now, I'm looking at the output of this. Maybe you can tell from the reflection there. It's not quite blue yet. That's because even with me pressing on this this clamp, this, this piece of metal here, I'm still not providing the same kind of low resistance, full force contact that that golden shorty spring provides inside the mag light. Okay, I'm almost at 10 amps there. I'm at 9.8, 9.9 before my hands start to slip. Again, keep in mind these are not fully charged batteries. If they were, I'd be cooking this sucker right now. There's 10 amps right there. 10.1. I've seen this go to 12 with this clamp. Now, here's the interesting thing. This is after the LEDs have burned in. Prior to burning in, I couldn't expect that kind of current draw from those batteries on that charge, let alone from these three AccuPower NIMH batteries. Just getting about six amps pull or so. Look at this now. Again, my, my clamp meter is still zeroed. Okay. Three NIMH batteries only. Look at that. I'm pulling 11 point something amps. Amazingly, the emitter still has not turned that blue yet, so I can't. Okay, what I was um, beginning to say before I was so rudely interrupted by my memory card running out was that um, the the LED turning blue is is not not a factor of of this being not properly heat synced in this case. Um, the Joe Bright Lumens heat sink is 
is probably about as good as you're going to get from a, um, a surface mount to emitter mounted with epoxy. Uh, it's just it's just a factor of the current draw on this thing being um, so much higher than it was before I burned in the LED. Uh, you can see, I hope, that well, maybe not that I'm measuring some really high currents here, um, way over spec for this emitter. And while I hold it like this, um, there's no blowing of the emitter. I mean, the, 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 the light coming out of it is nice and strong and white. Um, this is the SST90 4500K tint. Um, there I am, approaching 12 amps on these, uh, these lithium batteries, over 12 amps now and still nice nice white light coming out. When I screw this tail cap on and it starts to turn blue, um, it's got to be not because of the heat, because it's an almost instant effect. Um, it's got to be that the tail cap and spring are providing you know lower resistance and more contact force and I'm just getting even more than that 12 amp drive I just measured out of that. Um, batteries are starting to sag finally and, and now even with the tail cap on I'm, I'm not not getting a blowing of the emitter, but I am getting some serious heat generation. Um, the thing we're trying to get to here, and, and I guess this is the good news for everybody who's, you know, stressing over how to get their SST or SSR90 emitters to draw uh, close to the 9 amp spec current, is that after it's broken in and after it's um, burned in, uh, you know, it doesn't take much. In fact, one of these batteries would, would probably, um, you know, give me, even without the help of the other one in parallel, would give me the, the, the draw I'm looking for. Uh, more importantly to me is that these three NIMHC cells do the job. Um, now that it's broken in, uh, these batteries are, you know, near a full charge right now, but I've been playing with it, and they're looking, still getting, you know, there's 12 amps of current. I don't know if you will see that before I boggle it. Um, you know, on three, on three C cells. So, I think at this point, you know, the best reason to get to get the uh, the 9 amp constant current driver is actually to protect the LED from from burning out. Because um, if you run it, for, you know, constantly with the over current like that, it's going to uh, going to overheat and forward voltage is going to drop, and you run the risk of burning out the emitter. Um, me personally, at this point, knowing I'm getting well over 9 amp draw from the three C cells, and I only use it in short bursts, I probably won't go for the driver. But that's me. Um, you know, uh, good news I guess also for the people who are buying uh, some of the other torches that use 3C cells or 3D cells um, is that right now, you know, fresh out the gate, it might not pull the current that you would hope, but uh, over time as the emitter burns in and maybe with some resistance fixes, I mean this torch is super, super low resistance, everything is tricked out. Um, you know, you can get more than that 9 amp draw just from the, C the NIMH cells and, and no fancy lithium batteries in parallel or expensive drivers or anything. Um, you know, that means more money for buying more emitters and building more torches. But anyway, long story short, the emitter after burning in uh, forward voltage is significantly reduced and you will get that current draw that it is spec'd at on conventional power supplies without getting crazy. Thank you much. Bye.